What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, cool. Look what I got in front of us today just arrived. The Intamps is Funmat HT. I have to say, I'm super excited to bring this printer to you guys. Now this is an amazing printer in my opinion. The heated chamber. So let's get to the unboxing. All right guys, now after taking all the foam, it was very well packaged up. Uh, there are some things I'm gonna show you guys and take you guys through the steps, some things you have to actually undo that they bolt in so it doesn't move around. Uh, so let's start with some of the things they give you alongside the printer. Inside the, the package, there was a couple of boxes I had to open up, one containing two pieces of glass, and then one containing some tools, your extruder, some gloves. They send you a free kilo of ABS. So we have our memory card for loading stuff onto the printer. It'd be a real nice set of tweezers. Now remember, this is a high temperature machine. So if you're getting into this machine, you definitely don't want to be touching the nozzle with your fingers. Most, print, most of them will be printing at around, uh, you know, anywhere from 260 all the way up to 450 degrees. So you definitely don't want to touch the nozzle. You will burn yourself. Believe me, I've done it. And we got a nice set of flush cutters. Good quality, it seems to me. It looks like hardened steel. Set of wrenches. I'm sure most of you own your own already. Especially if you're about to step into a printer like this. Some tie wraps. USB cable printer style for hooking up to the computer. So next, we have the actual extruder itself, which needs to be installed, and I'll show you guys how to do that. And you get one of the wrenches. This actually is used for taking apart some of the nut and bolt uh, harnesses they used for keeping the X and Y from moving around. Also give us a bunch of spare nozzles, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 on a high temperature machine, printing carbon fiber nylon, carbon fiber peak. You definitely wanna have that selection. And then we've got some nozzle cleaning needles as well. A feeler gauge for the auto leveling. Looks like we have a spare extruder gear, a set of hex wrenches, pair of gloves for grabbing the build plate afterwards because polymers like to come off the bed hot. Sometimes if they cool down, you'll end up pulling chunks of your glass off. So let's try and avoid that. They also hooked us up with a kilo of ABS. So that's another nice thing there. Another SD card. A spare hot end, and I love the way the thermistor and heater cartridge connect. You really can't go wrong with that. Um, and the fact that they should send you a spare is awesome because if you're trying to do a job and you've got a jam and you don't have time to deal with the jam, you can go ahead and pop in a new hot end, be right back underway, relevel your bed, or if you're using the auto bed leveling feature, again, you'll have that. So that's a really nice bonus. And then your standard power cable. So that's what comes inside the box. Next, we're gonna move on to some of the small assembly required. Okay guys, so now we're gonna open up the top of the printer here. We're gonna give you an overhead view. There are four bolts and nuts you need to remove that secure your X and Y gantry for transport. So this is really easy. You pull up on the lever, you turn, and it opens up. So now we'll move to the other camera and we'll show you guys how to do this part. It's pretty simple. They give you the Allen keys. They also give you a wrench. Oh, they did it tight. So this loosening them is gonna be a bit of a pain, but well worth it. Now we can move that out of the way. Much easier for removal. There we go. So guys, once you get the first one out, the rest become relatively easy. Now you wanna be careful not to bend the bars or force on anything. While you're taking these clips out, let's secure it for travel. Uh, so carefully bend them apart and then pull off. So we're gonna take a look at that. You wanna bend this apart, don't just force it off. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the Y axis off. 
Man, I'm sweating. That was, that was a little intense. Okay, everything's moving freely. All right. I just need to take a look here. Okay, so the next step is, now that we've got everything up here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the extruder, okay? Which is pretty straightforward. It goes in with a piece of peak. Yes, you heard it right. Peak tubing. That's also included. Now when your chamber is up around 90 C, you definitely want some peak to back that up. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead. Jaren's gonna switch to the overhead cam. So we're gonna insert that piece of peak into the hot end. Then we're gonna run the motor cable through the back of the wiring harness here with the daisy chain. And then I'm gonna line up that piece of peak with the hole for the extruder. A little finicky to do this way, but... Okay, next step. Really simple, two provided countersunk screws. I believe these would be around an M3. They give you provided Allen wrenches. Now, if you have your own, you can go ahead. I'm just gonna use what was provided with the kit. Now, keep in mind guys, this printer comes certified for the US and for Canada. Okay guys, so the next step after we've got that extruder installed, now you wanna go ahead, there's a shroud that has two, I believe it's only two, this is my first time actually in this printer, but I believe it's only two screws from the top, um, just under the extruder here and on the side. And you're gonna wanna loosen those off, I believe this is an M25. Not take them all the way out because it's just an easy, uh, it's like a, it's got a slot in it for easy removal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen those and just take a peek on the back to see if there's anything. Now I'm gonna carefully, yeah, it just pops off. So this is just basically a nozzle shroud. Now I'm gonna be careful doing this because I don't wanna damage anything. There we go, yeah. So it definitely does come off relatively easy. Again, it's an expensive machine. You get what you pay for, guys. Definitely take your time when you're doing anything with these machines. Uh, you don't, you want to avoid any kind of damage happening to them. So I was careful taking this off. So now we want to take that extruder motor and it needs to go into P7 on the board. All right guys, so after taking off the shroud that protects all your wiring and your hot end and stuff, it's two screws. You don't actually remove them all the way. Again, be very careful when you're doing this. When you get a machine like this, you wanna make sure you do everything very carefully and take your time. Now, the extruder motor wire comes around, it comes through, it goes into P7. So if you're having trouble locating it, P7 is right here. It's right here. This is the motor cable, and it's actually the only left open pinout. I'm gonna make sure you plug that in the right way as well. As you can see, red is to the right, yellow is to the left. Okay, so that's the next step. From there, we're gonna install the glass bed. We're gonna turn this machine around, put the door back on, actually the lid back on, uh, and we're gonna go through some of the basic um, procedures for the setup for uh, beginning to print. All right. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install the piece of glass they give you. Now, obviously, if you break your glass, it works multiple sides, okay? You can go ahead and unthread these and put it on the second piece of glass they give you. Just magnets in there, and that's it. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you guys through the screen interface as well as the knob dial. Okay, I do have to apologize for any noise you might hear in the background. The Intamsis does have fans running, etc., that create quite a bit of noise in the background. So I do apologize for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys some of the basic settings. So let's start here under the build plate. Okay, I do highly recommend that you manually level. This is a must ahead of time. They do give you a feeler gauge you can use to level the bed. I'm gonna let that focus in. 
Okay, so that's how you level the bed. Now all you do is you go ahead, go under manual level, right? Now what's gonna happen when you get to this step, the build plate's gonna come to the top. So you can refer to the quick start guide ahead of time. And once that build plate gets to the top, we're gonna hit the next step. Okay. So now you wanna tighten down all three of those screws so the nozzle is not jammed into the bed, potentially. I've already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the next step. So at this point, this is where you'll go ahead to the back screw. You're gonna go ahead and adjust that with your feeler gauge until it's just touching the nozzle. Then you go ahead and skip and it brings you to the next corner. So there is only three adjustments for bed level on this printer. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and adjust that screw to the filler gauge feels correct. We move on to the third one. Now, for better accuracy, what the printer is gonna do now is go ahead and go back to the first one. Reason for that is you've been adjusting springs. It could just be a little bit off. So we're gonna go around again to all three points. And that will complete your bed level procedure. Just really make sure to get your bed nice and level. And it doesn't hurt every once in a while. Um, you know, you're doing a big print. You might want to run that bed level manually ahead of time. Now, that's all done. Now, when you first get the machine under build plate here, you've got the auto level fe feature. You don't really need to worry about the frequency but you wanna go ahead and calibrate your sensor. We've already done this. It walks you through step-by-step. Step. It's actually really simple to do. So make sure the first time you go to run your printer, you go ahead and calibrate that sensor ahead of time. Okay, now we'll go back to the top. Now you can use the roller to click. You can use the roller to turn through the functions. Okay, now another nice thing here is under the material profile, you can choose a material that they have pre-set up. Uh, they go all the way into peak, PEI, PSU, PPSU, nylon CF, they've got a bunch. Now I've created some customs for myself. You can also, when you set up a custom profile, this is pretty cool. You can go into custom, you can set your nozzle temperature, your build plate and chamber temperature. But not only that, now you have materials, you might be sleeping when your print finishes. You can go ahead and you, know, you can set all your flow and retraction length. You can do that while it's printing as well. So if you notice some stringing, you could retract a little more while you're doing your print. Uh, now this is really cool. Maintain build plate temperature, maintain ch chamber temperature. Now you can go ahead and use that feature. I recommend it if you're using Peak, Altem, PPSU, any of those uh, nanopolymers, uh, even nylons, uh, things like that. Uh, carbon fiber, anything with carbon fiber in it, you know, you might want to leave that on so it doesn't warp off and potentially break your glass. Okay, you can the maintain time, which is another nice thing. So you can go ahead and set that. And then you go ahead and click save as preset, give it a name and store it. So that's another cool feature. So before you start your print, you pick your, your material profile. So all those custom settings when the print is finished, etc., will be there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go back to the top. Again, we'll use the roller wheel or the touch screen either way. Okay, under the move access section, you can home the printer. You can shut your motors off for moving things around manually. Uh, you can go into the extruder section here and it'll heat up. Obviously this is gonna take a while, but you can extrude, etc., cetera, from, from these. So we're just gonna skip this step because it takes too long to wait for it to heat up. You can go ahead and set your retraction lengths in here. It's like a machine override. Uh, most of us will be using our slicers to do that. So I'll just return to the main menu. It's actually really simple, the interface on this guy. So you can move your X, Y, and Z in this menu. And then we'll go back to the main menu. 
And we'll go under settings here. And you can set up your build play chamber temperatures. And then under other settings, I like to double check this before I start a print to make sure my Z level isn't at zero like it is after being shut off. I know personally my Z level is going to be right here at 30. Um, from what I hear and have seen online, somewhere in around 0.30 in the positive side seems to be pretty accurate for this machine. And I have seen other machines on YouTube as well in and around this range for the Z offset. I'm not saying that is the Z offset. Go through the calibration process to find your Z offset. So we'll go ahead and go back. And the light settings you can change to always on, always off while printing. You know, you can have all these different settings in here for your lighting inside your enclosure. So here's where all your motion settings are, acceleration, max speed, things like that. This is all in this menu. You can adjust them through here. Obviously this machine has a maximum set to 300 from the factory on the Y. I'm sure the Z isn't ridiculously quick. Yeah, so again, you can change all those values in here. I don't recommend doing that. The machine is set up from the factory. Okay, it's that simple to run this machine, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Let's not forget, this is a high temperature machine built for polymers. So will it print PLA and TPU? Yes, these things are all possible. Would you need to open your chamber doors? Most definitely. Um, with that being said, if you wanna get into some really functional parts, jigs, uh, things that you might need for aerospace, nuclear power plants, all kinds of companies could benefit by owning a printer like this where you can actually design the part, prototype it out, print it for functional use right out of the box. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna kick it over to my final thoughts and show you some of the prints now. Okay guys, and we're back. Now after doing a bunch of prints on the Intamsys FunMat HT Enhanced, it's an amazing printer. I was able to print nylon HT, which you can see here, okay? Along with some nylon six, some nylon carbon fiber, and just to mix some of the materials together, maybe a little jig to put on the table here, for soldering, uh, whatever. We try to do useful prints here at 3D Printing Canada. Uh, we also, a little broomstick holder for each room in, uh, in the offices here, so we can hang them up. It's a print in place. We did that one out of nylon carbon fiber as well. And then for customers that come in and get the work done, we do a nylon carbon fiber print. Um, it's just kind of included in there when you get your BL Touch or your Micro Swiss upgrade done through us. So I went ahead and printed one of those on there. They came out really nice. Uh, definitely having a heated chamber helps, that's for sure. Especially stuff with not like nylon high temperature, so HTN nylon. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, and let us know in the comments what type of content you wanna see. See you in the next video.